hysteric laughter to like really sad moments as well like for example when it came to Nesso mm. that was a very sad moment for mm. Maria mm. and like when you listen to that song uh, for example Nesso is Old High German for warm Old High German Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Scott Schell and I'm a specialist in the Germanic languages. I have a PhD in Germanic linguistics from UC Berkeley, an MA in linguistics, and a BA in German. And today what I would like to go ahead and discuss is Heilung's song called Nesso. So originally I had done uh, a video just a few weeks ago or so and someone had asked if I would be interested in analyzing that song and talking about that song. At first I wasn't, you know, too sort of emphatic about it, but once I you know, once I realized that what they were doing was actually singing this charm, which is from the continent, um, I went ahead and, and, you know, looked into it a little bit and I wanted to sort of see what dialect they were singing and so on and so forth. So as you just heard, um, I believe it was Kai there who said that Nesso is the old high German word for worm. First off, sort of, um, it depends on your argument. So we have the word Nesso being referred to in Old High German. We also have the word Nesso being referred to in Old Saxon. Um, but it's probably a Latin borrowing, in which case meant some sort of like general unknown disease. And that is essentially what we're probably dealing with here. Nesso is a song that's used to, to cure someone of an illness, specifically and arguably uh, of worms. Because uh, we see that with the title Contra Vermes, in which case is literally against worms. Um, and it was used, obviously, as a medicinal practice, too. And in which case we see that that's exactly what Maria is singing about. She's singing about it, imagining her dog Luna um, apparently going through this trauma and she's trying to help her. And so intent is there obviously very emotional. I just recently watched an interview of them talking about this song because um, I was trying to get a better idea as far as, you know, what this, how they were approaching the song. And um, so again, intent is there. So it's, it's extremely powerful, obviously, but it's not Old High German. There is an Old High German form uh, and then there's an Old Saxon form. So we're going to go ahead and listen to some parts of the song um, I'll explain why it's Old Saxon and not Old High German, and then I'll go ahead and even give you some Old High German equivalents, because again, this is actually attested in both of these languages for trying to root out worms. So the thing is, too, that I should mention is that worm in this context and in this time period could mean like the little worms that you see that we're probably all thinking about. But back then, it could also mean like an actual dragon or serpent. So, but in this case... We're dealing, obviously, with the disease, and that's, you know, what the, the scribe is talking about when he writes these words down in these texts. So now you can hear, obviously, the mimicking of the snake or the dragon or the serpent, which is exactly what I was talking about with the word worm.
to say that is just beautiful. So, I mean, just the creative, the, the sort of creativity behind everything that they're bringing in, you know, just for this charm, which is only like three lines, you know, this has turned into something much larger. <laughs> So that's literally go out, Nesso. And so in this case, it's talking about a specific worm. So that's along with, or just with, nine little worms. So we actually have a suffix that I'll go ahead and show you in the video so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, which makes it a diminutive. So it's go out worm along with nine other little worms. And of course, nine is a very sacred number. All right, let's move on. Now she says, ut fana them marga anthepe. That's literally out from the marrow and into the or onto the bone is literally what that is. So it's it's extracting the the worms. It's extracting this disease. <laughs> Now she says, Fontemo bena on that flesk. And that's literally from the bone now onto the flesh. So it's getting, you know, it's moving again from, from the marrow onto the bone and onto the flesh. It's extracting. <laughs> So then we have ut fantemo flesca on the hut. So now it's actually being extracted from uh, the flesh onto the hide in a way. So it's just, it's like flesh and then onto the hide. And now as you see into this next part, um, it's going to actually be tied in, into the, um, the concept of an arrow and shooting the disease away. So again, ut von der Ahut, out from this hide onto the straula, which is the arrow. Drohten werfa so. It's literally lord but not the Christian Lord. This is actually a military Lord chieftain epithet. So in this context, it's, it's probably re being referred to, I should say being referred to the Christian Lord, whoever wrote this, but it's also important to know that that's actually originally a Germanic military title, um, in which case was most likely used, of course, with Odin. Uh, the Werther so is literally like make it so. So they're also appealing to this Drocht as well. So she actually says, Drochten Werthaso, Drochten Werthaso, Drochten Werthaso. That's really cool. I mean, because she's actually treating it like this magical formula with this like sort of magical formulaic context. So she's saying, Lord, make it so, Lord, make it so, Lord, make it so. And of course, in Maria's um, song here, she respectfully, respectfully and arguably is, is probably talking about Odin. Um, What's interesting about that is that if you look at the old High German form of this spell, um, it actually says to say Pater Noster three times. So it's kind of interesting that Maria would then take the old Saxon here and say, you know, Lord or even Warlord, you know, make it so, Warlord, make it so, make it so. So instead of saying the Latin Our Father prayer three times, um, she's actually using the old Saxon here at the end to say it three times. Of course, uh, hoping for 
the spell to have even more uh, efficiency since it's repetition of the sounds and repetition of the semantics and so on. <laughs> line go out worm along with nine little worms <laughs> So we have ut from the so again we have out from the flesh onto the hide and from the hide onto the into the arrow and then drochten make it so. <laughs> So you can even hear the snake again, or a serpent, or a dragon of some sort in the background. So really the whole song is the charm, not just obviously the words, but the whole thing is part of this charm. <laughs> It's a great song. I've never actually heard this song before. Um, I wanted to sort of just kind of do this on the fly. Um, I have, I've, obviously, as you saw in that interview at the beginning of this video, I kind of looked into the background of the song and the context of the song, um, but I never actually heard them perform it. I never heard the melody or anything else. So the old high German form, though, getting back to this, the actual lyrics, is very different. Um, actually, the structure is very, very much the same. But the sounds are, they have some different sounds and some different sound features as far as like what makes it Old High German. So again, with Old Saxon, for example, you have Gang Ut. But in Old High German, um, that T shifts. So you have like Gang Us. So you see it's spelled as a Z, but it's actually an S. It's just like German Aus. So Aus, but English out. Um, and then you also... Uh, see, for example, Fona Demo Fleska in Dasfel. So in, in Old Saxon, you have like Ud van Demo, Demo, Demo. So you have that TH still there, uh, in which case you do have in some Old High German dialects, but not. Um, it's not really that prevalent. Um, usually when we talk about Old High German, we're talking about that TH shifting to D. So... Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to go ahead and talk about today. It was just kind of a nice thing for me to sit here and listen to a song and 
It's just wonderful that they're singing it in this old language. And her pronunciation, by the way, is actually pretty good. Um, you know, with these older languages, with like Old Saxon and Old High German, the accent's always supposed to be like on the first syllable. And it was just, it was, it was really nice. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. So I'm uh, hoping you all are having a great week. Got plenty of videos coming out here really soon. Uh, in fact, I got three different American runestone inscriptions that I'm going to go ahead and record and talk about uh, within the next uh, two weeks. So in addition to that, of course, we have rune names still to do, you know, in Old Saxon. So lots of stuff to come. Uh, just been busy with life. <laughs> so, all right. I'll see you all soon. Take care.